We're in the uh, Gospel of John. This will be our 16th installment in this book. We're going to be in verses of chapter 1, verses 43 through 46. Uh, you'll notice, uh, I trust you picked up on this, that <coughs> in the record of Jesus from his birth to his ascension and exaltation, everything about him in the record relates to the great salvation he came to effect. Yeah, amen. Jesus never approached from any other angle. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like a normal person, or it, never. Always from his angle. Doctrinally, when we talk about the birth of Christ, mm -hmm. we're addressing the matter of him humbling himself. Yep. His earthly ministry was an introduction to the divine power that the likes of which it takes to save a person. And the kind of power he uses to bring about redemption. His death had to do with the removal of sin and deliverance from the curse and destruction of the devil. Mm -hmm. They're pointing out that everything about Jesus had to do with yeah, amen. salvation. Even though there were, if you were on earth, you may not have seen any one of these things. Mm -hmm. We're not visible to the naked eye. His resurrection confirmed the triumph over the last enemy. Mm -hmm. So Jesus totally triumphed over all inimical forces. And also it established the reality of the coming resurrection. His post-resurrection appearances to the disciples confirmed the superiority of life. He, he overcame. That was the same Jesus that was with him before. But he had overcome all the enemy. Life is more powerful than death. And the ascension confirmed that the majority of his ministry is effected in heaven instead of upon earth. And that heaven is the grand final place for the final gathering, in gathering of all things into one. So Jesus is nowhere represented in a quaint or a melancholy way. Yeah, that's right. Not in the scripture. Now to me, this confirms that you should never try and make Jesus relevant. Yep. Yep. It's a big mistake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. He's never presented that way in Scripture. That's right. And some people think that that will make it more uh, more attractive. To, you know, it, does, it maybe make it more attractive in the, to the flesh, but yep. it doesn't uh, doesn't accent what he's came to do. Mm -hmm. well, amen. You know, also the fact that Jesus didn't make an appearance for the first 4,000 years of human history shows us how serious sin was, what a, what a blow had been dealt to the human race. And for 4,000 years, nobody could, very few people knew the thing was even a problem. Yeah. And God established that what God required couldn't be accomplished by man, whether without law or with law. It, it couldn't be done. No matter how much information yeah. God gave men, they couldn't correct their condition. Uh -huh. yeah. It's also demonstrated that God is most honored by mature faith. Mm -hmm. Now, uh -huh. infants, we like infants. They're, they're precious. Yeah. And... Uh, the strength of a young man is it's impressive. Mm -hmm. The wisdom of the old age is helpful. Mm -hmm. But God wants a fully matured life, as demonstrated by in Jesus, mm -hmm. a fully matured life mm -hmm. that is lived with godly discretion, without, without, uh, with devout consen consecration and unquestionable commitment to His will. That's the thing that God's looking for. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yep. So we thank God for infants, mm -hmm. but we want them to grow up 
to be mature in Christ. Jesus, Jesus, he lived out what God wanted to, in a man, in a human, in a human being, if you want to use that term. Jesus lived out what God wanted. And Jesus summarized his life. He summarized it in these words. I do always those things that please him. See that? That summarized it. It did make a difference whether he was making a bench before he was 30. I don't think Jesus spent a lot of time saying, oh, Lord, help me to keep my mind off making these benches and whatever. I don't think he thought that way. I don't think you should either. Yeah, you do what you do unto the Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. If it's digging the ditch, mm -hmm. that make it what it is. Doesn't if it's lawful. Mm -hmm. If it's lawful. Yeah, that's right. And Jesus demonstrated that. Mm -hmm. He lived that out. Mm -hmm. yes. Now in our in John here, Jesus is commencing to start preparations to build his church. He's starting to assemble some key people. John 1, 43 through 46. The day following, Jesus would go into Galilee and findeth Philip. He saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. It's the first two he. Philip findeth Nathanael, saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can any, can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Yeah. Amen. Now this is a, quite a text. I want to, take a little time here to comment on the day following. <clears throat> the expressions, the day following and the next day occur eight times in the Gospels. Five of them relate to Jesus' ministry. They speak of the consistency of Christ's life. Mm -hmm. What he's doing today, yeah. do the next day. Yeah. What he's doing the next day, do the day following. It was a sort of a consistency to his life. He summarized it this way. He summarized it this way in Luke 13, 33. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following. See, that? Now that's totally the manner of the kingdom. This is, this is how you live. This is how he lived. Today, tomorrow, the day following. There was one uh, continuous flow of his life. You call it a contiguous whole. It's all fits together. Yeah. Some people's lives don't fit together. You can't tie together what they do through the week. You can't like tie it together. You got a little string here and a little string there and a little string there. And you can ought to expect that that's not going to work too well. That's not going to work too well. There has to be a flow to your life. You're on a highway of holiness. There's a, there's a, there should be a direction and a flow. It's something that you, you develop. You learn to live this way. You don't just automatically do this. I don't, I'm not sure that would bring a lot of glory to God if you did. Notice what we have thus far in, this, uh, in our text. John the Baptist sees Jesus the next day and announces, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Again, the next day, John sees Jesus and says, Behold the Lamb of God, at which time Andrew and another disciple follow Jesus and inquire where he's staying. Now, that event, the day following, is when Jesus proceeds to carry out the events of our text. He's just, just moving, right, <laughs> moving right along. There you're finding, this is living out like walking in the Spirit. There it is. There, that's, that's living that out. Mm -hmm. Living by faith. There, mm -hmm. there it is. That's living that out. 
Set your affection on things above. See, walk and please God. That's that's telling you what that's like. It's like a. There's not a break. In your focus, there's not a break in the reason why you're living. There's not a break in the direction you're going. Now this will require attention. You can't be a scatterbrain and live this way. You can't. You can't be immature and live this way. But this is how this is what you target to live this way so that you know God's with you all the time because as soon as you depart from this you're not sure. Uh -huh. yeah. Some say God's with you no matter where that may sound nice but you don't know that unless you're on the highway. Yeah, yeah. Even somebody tells you this. You can't really realize this until you're actually living under the Lord. See a lot of people they, they have trouble in life because they as they say change horses in the middle of the stream. Yeah. All of a sudden, they, the reason they're living changes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, the devil's a master at yeah. getting people to change their focus. Yes. Look over here. Yeah. Yeah. See that? See that tree there? Look how beautiful that fruit is. Yeah. Ah. It's good for food. You get to be eaten. That's what that. I mean, why would a tree have fruit and you not eat it? So there. See, that's that was a diversion, and it worked. Yeah. The first time he tried it, it worked. He's still using that. He still uses that to divert people. That's right. But he never was successful with Jesus. Amen. Jesus, it says, would go forth in the Galilee. He would go forth in the Galilee. Other versions read, he wanted to go to Galilee. That's the New King James Version. Or he proposed to go forth. That's to Galilee. That's New American Standard. He decided to leave for Galilee. That's the NIV. He was minded to go forth to Galilee. That's the American Standard Version. Young literal said he willed to go with it. See, this was a conscious decision. This wasn't like a happenstance. This wasn't deciding like men generally decide. Well, I decided just a different kind of decision. It was a decision. It was a choice, something he wanted to do, but it's with doing the will of God in mind. See, the thing that drove his whole life, he told, I only do the things that please my father. That's, I always do the things that please my father. I, whether we're talking about today or tomorrow or the day following that, so I'm pleasing God. See, that was driven by that desire makes you do certain things. That desire makes you want to do certain things. Or if you get up higher, that desire makes God causes God to direct you to do certain things. If you want to get up high enough, you can see that. See, Jesus said uh, to his disciples one time, he said, my meat, <laughs> my, my thing that makes me strong, my meat, my, the thing that builds me up and makes me have some strength, my, my meat, the thing that sustains me, yeah. my meat, yeah. is to do the will of God. That's, yeah. that's my meat. That's a thing. That's the thing that nourishes my soul. Mm -hmm. See, in the work in the world, when you work, you wear out. Yeah. But in the kingdom, when you work, you get strong. <laughs> it's a different. My meat's to do, not to eat. Didn't see my meat's to eat. My meat's to do. See, it's a different. Works on a different principle. And I'm, and I'm sure that at some time, all of you have actually experienced this. Mm -hmm. That you you have your best time when you're right in the heart of God's will. That's your. You're your strongest, you're your most creative, mm -hmm. your will is sanctified. Mm -hmm. Jesus said another time, now I came down from heaven not to do my own will, yeah. but the will of him that sent me. He told you, right, this is why I came, this is why I came here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now sometimes uh, assemblies gather together. There might be, you know, some focus. We have a, a focus, a legitimate or otherwise, focus. And if you listen, Jesus will say to you, look, I came down here to do the will of my Father. Mm -hmm. Oh, it changes how you pray. It changes how you act. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm here. I'm not, I didn't come down here to hear what you want. Uh -huh. yeah. So you say, well, what should we do? Then you connect what you're doing to the will of God. Mm -hmm. And if you can't tie it together, then let your requests be made known because yeah. he's inviting you to do that. 
And then God will give you peace, which is really the troubling factor. Yeah, yeah. God will give you peace, and that will calm you down so you'll have to be able to see, see yeah, God working. Yeah. Jesus would go forth into Galilee. Later in Matthew tells us he went to Galilee of the Gentiles. He used that phrase, Galilee of the Gentiles, Matthew 4.15. That is, there are a lot of Gentiles that lived in, in Galilee. It, was, uh, it wasn't the most exalted part of Canaan. Remember at Pentecost, they said, these are Galileans. I mean, you know, these were like, a, like the hillbillies of the day, you might say. But he had this desire to go into Galilee. Scripture tells us that, that that's where he did most of his work. The cities, they did most of his work. Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum, those were in Galilee. That's where, those, that's where they were. He did most of his work where he wasn't appreciated. Interesting, isn't it? <laughs> to fulfill the scripture. Yeah, amen. See, people see this has got to be a person. If this, if this person is everything he says he is, and that we think he is, and he's in Galilee, this has got to be the Messiah. Mm. Nobody yeah. else would do that. Yeah. Nobody else would concentrate on Galilee. Mm -hmm. But this has got to be the one. He would go to Galilee. Yet in our own measure, as we, as, we, as we live by faith, mm -hmm. there'll be certain choices we make. Mm -hmm. Things that we do in the interest of the Lord and the interest of his kingdom. Like going, it'll be for us like going to Galilee. Well, he goes there, and he finds, he findeth Philip. Yeah. Find, finds Philip. Mm -hmm. Some of the verses like the, Basic Bible says he came across Phil. He came across. The New Jerusalem Bible says he met, he met, met Phil. Williams, he got it. He says he sought out yeah, right. Philip. Message Bible says he ran across. Uh, there are a variety of uses of the word find it. There, that is true. There are a variety of uses. But the one I think he's talking about here the appropriate, yeah. is this, to meet with after searching, to find a thing sought, to, yeah. to find after searching or discover, to come upon by intentional searching. That's, yeah. He went to Galilee to get Philip. That's right. Amen. He's gathering those given to him by the Father. I remember. Yeah. Uh -huh. Father gave them to Jesus, mm -hmm. but this is how he gave them. Right. He had to go, go yeah. to Galilee and get this Get another one of these people. He'd already be already picked up too. Andrew and Peter. Now he's going to pick up two more. Gathering. He's the fifth one listed as an apostle. He's the fifth one in the, every apostolic list. He's the fifth one. Simon, Andrew, James, John, Philip. In every one, he's the fifth one. So he's pretty ranked pretty high there. He doesn't say to Philip, look, Philip, I want you to be one of my apostles, which he was going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not what he said. That's right. He says, follow me. That's right. See, in the kingdom of God, following precedes any assignment. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Before God gives you something to do, follow me. Well, the Lord Jesus, as the head of the church, dispenses to you whatever gift. Follow me. That's the first thing. Follow me. Following Jesus involves you being where he is, not him being where you are. Yeah, amen. So as soon as Philip finds out Jesus is there, he's yep. he going to gravitate to Jesus right away. Amen. As elementary as it may seem, this is the very point multitudes stumble at. They don't follow Jesus. They want Jesus to beat them where they are. Yes. Why don't they? Because following Jesus involves crucifying the flesh Amen. or self-will. Yes. See, to follow Jesus, 
You you got to adopt his agenda. Uh -huh. He he not going to change where he's going for you. As much as he loves you, as much as he cares for you, he's not going to change his focus for you. He's going to have you follow him so you'll change your focus. So Philip, he, he not only follows him, he finds somebody now. Philip finds Nathaniel. Now John's the only gospel writer that mentions Nathaniel. He's not mentioned by anybody else in the Bible. Nathaniel was with Peter when he was fishing after Christ rose from the dead. Nathaniel was with him. And Jesus said, the scriptures say that was the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples. So I'm, Nathaniel was, in my judgment, an apostle. Eventually, an apostle. But nobody else mentions him. No listing of an apostle mentions Nathaniel, except John mentions him. Now I'm going to put this together. Bartholomew, who all three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and Book of Acts, mention Bartholomew as an apostle. Mm -hmm. Luke, uh, John, never mentions Bartholomew. That name is not anywhere in John's Gospel. He never mentions Bartholomew. Now, I'm going to affirm that Nathaniel was, in fact, Bartholomew. That's who he was. I list all the list Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Acts. I list them in the order that's found in Matthew. Mm -hmm. All the names are there. You check them out, you find out that Thaddeus was Judas, brother of James, mm -hmm. brother defines you. Mm -hmm. Bartholomew, that's who Nathaniel was. Mm -hmm. It was a different name. Now, people would have surnames. They'd have Grecian names. They'd have different kind of names. Mm -hmm. So I can't help but I'm driven to that conclusion. I wouldn't make it a test of fellowship, but I think, like, what other conclusion yeah. could you come to? Now, I noticed, too, in this that the, the closeness of these brethren with one another, mm -hmm. certain, but they knew they could tell, see? Yeah. Andrew finds Peter, Philip finds Nathaniel. See, there's a certain, there was a certain society of people. Andrew and Peter were joined by blood, but they were by in spirit, too. Yeah. Yeah. So here comes Philip. He finds Nathaniel. Mm -hmm. He says, we found him. Yeah. We. He didn't say, I find him. Find. He didn't say, I found him. Uh -huh. He said, we. Yeah. Speaking for the group, we. We found him, Nathaniel. We found him. We found the one. We made a discovery of the one. The basic Bible says we found the man. We found the very person. We found the Messiah. We found the one we've been waiting for. We found him. Uh -huh. He speaks for a group of believers. That's right. We. Uh -huh. It's obvious they were part of the Israel within Israel. There were some people in Israel that were looking, mm -hmm. waiting. Yeah. And he's speaking for them. He, that's who he's speaking for. He's not speaking for the Pharisees here. We, they not be, that, they're not included in that number. Yeah. Real believers are among those that claim to be believers. Those are the ones we, we speak for. Amen. We don't speak for every church member when we say we. Uh -huh. We're talking about those that are walking in the light, uh -huh. in fellowship with Christ. This generation of people still exists, a group of people within another group of people. Yeah. There are believers among pro professing believers. Uh -huh. They're like Israelites among Israel, real Israelites among Israel. See that? Yeah. Now you'll, you'll see it. You've seen it in what virtually every place you've been. Mm -hmm. You've seen it in the body of people. Mm -hmm. There's a nucleus of That's people. Right. Yeah. And that's who he's speaking for. I'm sure that these were people who had the mark on them, remember? Set a mark on those that sigh and cry because of the abominations. I'm sure these these brethren were discontent with Pharisees and Sadducees and all this sort of thing. They must have been like those people in Malachi's day that spoke often one with another. We, we. Yeah. He said, well, that's what he's doing here. They're speaking one with another. We found him. 
We found them. And we know that they were, we find they were conversant with Moses and the prophets. Right. These, were, these were Bible people, you might say. We found them, which Moses in the law and the prophets, we found, we found that one. We didn't find the one we hoped would come, you know, so to speak. That's the one we found. Now, <coughs> it took some thinking now to associate Jesus of Nazareth with. Uh -huh. You had to. You you couldn't just do this off the top of your head. Mm -hmm. When they confronted Jesus, it set them to thinking, yeah. to comparison of what they see with what Moses and the yeah, prophets yeah. said. See, they compared it to us. He's, he's the one. He's the one. Now, it might surprise you in the Christian community how very little most people know about Jesus. Just to kind of perform it like an experiment on your own and see if you can detect what the average Christian really knows about Jesus, and you will be astounded at how close to zero yeah, yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. Very little. Generally, it's some kind of platitude that's been stated, you know. Uh -huh. But these men knew. Yeah, amen. They knew who to expect, and uh -huh. keep in mind now, it had been a, the, the evidence that they were looking for was written hundreds of years. Yeah, that's right some cases thousands mm -hmm. of years before this. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah, I think there's no doubt that these men knew Moses and the prophets. Oh, yeah. And and they more than that, they they obviously believed Moses yeah. and the prophets. Yeah. It wasn't this was they were they weren't like the scribes. It wasn't like okay. an academic thing for yeah, these, right. these men. But I also have to think, I suspect Mm -hmm. that their recognition of Jesus as because this is pretty astounding for them uh -huh. at this point that's right because mm -hmm. Jesus hasn't really done anything yet yeah that's right whether this whether we're what you've heard or not the New Living Translation says come and see for yourself don't let somebody else tell you what we are that's right we'll live it right out before you just come and see like uh, Sister Tanya's parents, they came and saw. That's right. Yeah. That's what happened. That's right. Yeah. They came and saw. Well, uh -huh. I can't be that bad. Yeah. I've never been treated like good like this before. Yeah. See, yeah. they came and saw. That's right. That's why it's wrong to re try to reduce Christ down. Yeah. Yes. Just come and see. You know, it's this is written for our sake. Well, the, uh, <laughs> hey, we man. haven't. We we did not have direct. <laughs> Uh, experience of Christ in the flesh. Right. Actually, very few people, very, very few people did. Yeah. Uh -huh. But these men did. Yeah. They had direct. They had direct fellowship mm -hmm. with with God in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, a person who refuses to believe in Christ, yeah. not o not only are they yeah. not only are they disbelieving Jesus Himself. Mm -hmm. They're also disbelieving all of these witnesses. Yes, that's right. Because these these men were going to be the primary witnesses. Mm -hmm. That's what it says of them in the book of Acts. Amen. You will be my witnesses. Uh -huh. That's right. Remember when Judas hung himself? They said we need to get another person who who went in and out among us. Got to be a witness. Gotta be, they had to have had this direct experience. Yes. So even they knew mm -hmm. that this, that was important. That Jesus was going to use them in this manner. So. Mm -hmm. So a person who disbelieves the apostles, see, that's a they're calling these men liars. That's right. Mm -hmm. And they're saying that everything that they said and witnessed and experienced and wrote about is a lie. Yeah. Jesus said, whoever to the apostles, whoever doesn't <coughs> receive you doesn't receive me, and whoever doesn't receive me doesn't receive my father. So in other words, this is how God works. He divulges first-hand testimony to faithful witnesses. You should, and also when you when you tell what you believe or what you only tell what you've seen. Don't don't spout something. It may be true, but if you haven't seen it, don't say it. 
say what you personally yes. have comprehended. Amen. That give weight, great weight to your testimony. Yes. Because if you just spout like a sectarian line, that's not going to have, that doesn't have any power that's right. at all. So just see, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. Right. See, the, the word of your testimony has power, has overcoming power. Yeah, but they just had they just, they just had a bigger witness. Come and come and see. I I don't think we can stress enough the responsibility of maintaining an environment where Christ is is present. Yes. I was going to say that the the presence of Christ was central. To this, it wasn't a group of people that decided Jesus was the Messiah, and they said, "Well, we're going to start our own group." And and the thing that that unites us is that we think these things about Jesus, without Jesus Himself being present, yeah. hmm. and the sectarianism that you're speaking of, it's, it's people getting together, oftentimes some people getting together, and they're united on some idea, mm -hmm. yeah. some belief. Yeah. But the test of the truth is. Is truth actually present? Christ Himself is yeah, right. present in that, and is He central? We saying, "Come and see Him," uh -huh. or is it about yeah. us somehow? And, and He and He can yeah, convince them. Amen. Amen. Yes. If, if Jesus is present, Jesus is never idle. Yes. Yes. It wasn't like what well, we think that this is of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did right. Uh huh. It wasn't like oh we don't really have anything better to do, so we'll we'll we'll, we'll follow and we'll see if he yeah. really is. It, it looks it looks it could very well be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Amen. And Jesus is still um, doing everything that pleases the Father. Even in the, right now in the midst of the assembly, everything Jesus does is pleasing to the Father and, of course, to his followers, too. Yeah. He's come to give us an understanding. Yes. Now, whether we're individual, by, our individ by ourselves individually, whether we're collectively, if we will make the environment conducive yes. to Christ's presence, the kind of environment we already know by example that he will inhabit, yes. if we do that, he will work. This is why people were, multitudes were added to the early church. Uh -huh. We're talking in the numbers of thousands. This is why they were added. It wasn't because they had, these were expert witnesses. It's because they, Jesus was in their witness. Yeah, amen. That's right. And he took what they said and he worked uh -huh. this, these great additions to the multitudes added to the church because the environment was one in which Christ could move about uh -huh. freely. Can everybody see that? Yeah. <laughs> One time, uh, I'm coming on the word, come and see. One time in, in Hezekiah's day, the folks started tithing again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and it says that they brought in heaps, and piles, you know, yeah. of tithes. And it was, it was mind-boggling. Here's what the scripture says about it. When Hezekiah and the princess came and saw the heaps, they blessed the Lord and his people Israel. Yeah. See? Uh -huh. Come and see. Yeah, amen. So that's what happened. When God works mm -hmm. and you come and see it, mm -hmm. it sets off. <laughs> that's right. It sets off blessing and praise in you. And an influence emanates from that that nobody here, yeah. you can't calculate how, yeah, how great or effective it is. Amen. Yeah, there's, there's no reason not to come and see. That's uh -huh. right. Everything is done. The Queen of Sheba, she came and saw Solomon, a yeah. uh -huh. queen, laid aside an entire business of yeah. an entire kingdom. That's right. Yeah. Come see a man. No one's had, no one has an excuse not to come. Would you see a greater than Solomon this year? <laughs> Amen. Yeah. I think I close there. I trust that uh, I'm getting a lot out of these. But this, the thing that is 
scoring on me is how he's selecting. He's one at a, one at a time. He selects somebody, then they go find somebody yeah. else. You know, it's just, yeah. that's how Jesus works. Amen. Not the only way he works. I understand that. But look at the day at Pentecost as Peter went out and got 3,000. Right. He found 3,000. <laughs> and he delivered the same thing, same kind of message Philip did to one. Yeah. Uh -huh. It was the same message, so the message could bring in 3,000 or one or 5,000. Right. There's no limit. Come and see. Anyone else tonight? The work of salvation in us, wherever yeah. Christ is working, it is something that can be seen. That's yeah. right. I thought of what Isaiah said, or the Lord said to Isaiah. He says, Behold, I do a new thing, and shall ye not know it? That's mm -hmm. right. Which means there will be evidence mm -hmm. that God has worked. Amen. See, when God works, us, the, the evidence is, is evident because it contrasts so much with everything else. Yeah. Uh -huh. The hand of the Lord. Yes, Hannah? And you have said that when you work, when you work in the world, you get weak. But when you work in in the heavenly kingdom, you become stronger. Mm -hmm. The reason why you are weak in this world is because it's made of flesh, and all flesh does is weaken you. But when you are in the spirit, you are strengthened by God. So if we continue to work in God's kingdom, God will strengthen us. That's right. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, sister. I was considering this phrase, come and see. Um, the Lord gives us something to do here to come and see. Um, mm -hmm. If Nathaniel had not gone to see the Lord, he would not have seen him. Mm -hmm. The Lord is giving us something to do. That's right. Mm -hmm. Two things, come, see. see. Yeah, try, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, you, you kind of, on the surface, you think you say, come and, and hear, come and listen, because faith comes by hearing. But see, there was something that was going to be witnessed right. in the yeah. presence of Christ, yeah. that, that, he, that he had to see it. Yeah. Now, yeah. in both cases, uh, when Andrew brought Peter, Jesus addressed Peter. Yeah. And, and our next time, we'll find that Jesus addressed Nathaniel. So they didn't know what Jesus was going to do. Right. But in both cases, Jesus did something. Amen. That's right. Had, we, had yeah. personal contact with the people they brought. Uh -huh. And we should anticipate the same That's thing. Right. When, 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 when we bring people to Jesus, he'll do yeah. something. Amen. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like word, words would fail to contain the object that they're <laughs> trying to bring them to. So they're That's like, right. just come and see it. You gotta uh, see it. You That's gotta right. see it. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, you gotta see it. Mm. All right, we'll have a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful that you've given us the privilege of coming and seeing. And Jesus has proved to be everything you said he is. Yeah. We thank you for that, Father. It's very satisfying, very gratifying. And it builds our faith that every time we see an accurate depiction of Jesus, we're persuaded that he's the one. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.